So tennis is one of those great sports where there is a plethora of data and statistics available to you. And that means that this is prime for analysis and using that data to position yourself. Loads of sports now present loads of data. I don't think they realize just how valuable this data is to traders, but that's what I'm going to explore in this video. If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So tennis is a sport that has a lot of data sat behind it. A lot of data is collected, redistributed, reinterpreted. And one of the things I love about sports trading is that many years ago I used to have to collect data and I used to waste enormous amounts of time trying to get to the next level of what I could see within a sport. And now it's just presented to you on a plate. In fact, I don't think that when people publish this sort of data that they realize what they're doing to help the betting and trading community because a lot of this data is absolutely invaluable if it's used in the correct way. So when I was looking at trying to crack the puzzle that was tennis, I knew I needed to get to some of the core values. I needed to understand exactly what it was that I was looking at and how that would influence the outcome of the event. Because think about it, if you're reacting to stuff constantly, you're always going to be behind the curve. What you need to be to be profitable is to be ahead of the action in front of what is about to happen. So that is why Tennis Trader on Bet Angel was created, because I wanted to model tennis to allow me to understand where the price is going to be at some point in the future and then anticipate that, make a judgment call on whether I think that is going to happen. That's how you profit on tennis. And Tennis Trader was created to allow me to model that. And then, of course, um, it's in the product and you can use it too. It's, it, you know, it's a very complicated model. But what I'm going to do for you here is to show you how this ties in with data that you see published on ATP tour sites and so on. Um, and how you can put that into Tennis Trader to allow you to get even more accurate and understand how the model is created um, and also, you know, things that influence it, the output of that particular model. So, you know, Bet Angel over many years it sort of encapsulates my journey through the markets. And obviously we get some very valuable feedback from people using it. And therefore um, that goes into it as well. So we just sort of get the best of both worlds. Without uh, Bet Angel, I couldn't trade. Um, and in order to keep pushing the product forward, um, we need everybody out there to be able to use it and that allows us to reinvest more money into it. And things like Tennis Trader uh, come out of the back end of that process. So Tennis Trader wasn't a feature that people asked for. Um, I needed it to be designed so that I could really understand the opportunity within tennis. And there it is. So let me explain in a little bit more depth um, how it's constructed and the way that it works. And also the sort of data that you can look at on websites that will enable you to get more out of it and understand where we're coming from on the model. And, um, you know, it's important to do that because you look at tipping sites, you look at people giving advice, um, and it's usually from the wrong base. Within every sport, there's a core stat that basically defines the sport. So, for example, on football, it's, you know, how many goals are going to be scored and who scores them? In tennis, it's all about points getting won. And you're thinking, well, how can you possibly distill that into a model? Well, let me explain. So behind me, you can see the ATP Tour stats. And I'll just explain some of these stats to you so you can understand what they are. I've actually visited the website. I've gone onto the stats leaderboard. And then I'm looking at um, all players over the last 52 weeks on all surfaces. Um, and it's coming up with these stats. So I'll explain what some of these are. The serve rating is basically how good are they at serving. That's a, a stat that's generated out of the statistics. So you can see John Isner is a good server. Well, I never would have guessed. <laughs> if you've ever seen John Isner play, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, Milos Ryanich um, is also a good server, as is Kevin Anderson. So you can see, you know, this is basically saying he, who serves well. You can see despite his age, Roger Federer is up there as well. Del Potro, jo uh, Djokovic, Sam Querrey. And you're sort of thinking, well, why is there this, this emphasis on the serve? Well, if we look at this, this is the first serve percentage 
um, and we're not that interested in it. We are interested, but not dramatically. What we're more interested is in is the percentage of first serve points won, because this is saying that when the player goes up um, to serve, this is how many times he is going to win that particular point. Um, and it's this statistic that we tend to use um, within the model. We're looking at an individual player and we're saying, how often does he win a point on serve? And therefore, what chance does he have of actually going on to win the game? So we, if we look at it simplistically, um, Roger Federer has about an 80% chance of winning one point in a service game on average. So basically, what we're saying here is that if Roger Federer steps up and serves 80% of the time, he will win that particular point. So what's the chance of Roger Federer, on average, winning a game 40 love? So it would be 15 love, 30 love, 40 love game. That would be four points. So if we do 0.8 to the power of four, you've now got the percentage chance of Roger Federer winning a game to love. It's as simple as that. There you go. Uh, how easy was that? But the problem is, when you look at tennis, um, there's an infinite number of paths that it can follow. So you'd have to do 40 love, 40 15, 40 30, um, 40 30, where a player went 30 love up and then Roger Federer won it by coming back, or he went 15, uh, 15 love, 15 all, or love 15. There are an infinite number of paths, and that tennis traded is the hard work for you there, basically. But let's have a look at some of these stats as well and, and dig around a little bit deeper within here. So you can see that Roger Federer has an 80% chance of winning uh, a point on his first serve, but 20% of the time he doesn't. Um, or maybe he fails to get that serve in, and therefore you can see winning a point on his second serve drops off fairly dramatically. So, you know, there are some important things in there. 62% of the time he gets a serve in, 80% of those he wins. But if you do about 40% of the time, he doesn't get his first serves and he has to do a second serve and about 60% of the time he wins those points. Um, the games won, tennis trader will do that for you. So you don't need to uh, particularly worry about that. And you can see the number of aces the player gets on, on average within here. But of course, this is only really one side of the equation because you've also got to look at the returns of serve as well. So what you can see on here are all of the service stats. So we can see Isner is at the top of the list, Federer, Djokovic, uh, Query, uh, Rafa Nadal um, seems to do pretty well as well. He wins about 72% of the games. And so you can see these are all of the service and then you can just scan down the list. But you can see they're actually in the sort of 70s. That's about the area in which most of them are at. And then as we get down to the slightly lower ranked players, they start to go into the 60s and so on. So um, those are all of the service um, or the serve leaders, they call them. But we can also look, because obviously tennis is, involves striking a ball and then somebody playing it back, we can also look at the return leaders as well. So the return leaders are basically the first serve, a player steps up, he serves the ball, and then the guy tries to get it back. So these are the percentages of how effective uh, players are at returning serve. So you can see Rafa Nadal is top of that list. Um, Schwartzman, uh, Fabio Fonini, uh, Djokovic, uh, David Goffin. Uh, you can see that uh, Guillermo Fils, they're all good returners of serve. So you can see here, you know, it tends to be sort of in the in the 30s and the top players tend to be about 35%. So you're sort of saying there's a 70%, or right, maybe up to as high as an 80% chance of somebody doing a serve and getting a point. But then you've got to balance that out with how good the return of serve is as well. So there's a, a mixture between the two there. But uh, this is where it gets interesting because obviously if somebody's got a 70% chance of winning a serve and somebody else has got a 70% chance of winning a, ser a service game, you need to adjust that slightly based upon the return percentages. But effectively, those two players are, are evenly matched. If you assess that they've both got a 70% chance of winning a point against their opponent, um, you, you can tell that they're fairly evenly matched. So that it's the gap really between the chance of each one winning a point on serve that defines how the match is priced and how those positions develop as the match progresses. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Um, but yeah, you can actually look at that and you can actually do that by surface types as well. So if you look at surface type, you can see Rafa Nadal on clay is brilliant. Uh, he's way above everybody else in terms of anticipating and returning a serve on clay, which we all know, but there is the data um, presented to you in, in an actual percent. So you can see that there are some players that are good at clay 
and uh, some that are, are better at hard courts because if we switch to hard court you can see Djokovic is at the top there and Rafa Nadal drops down a little bit so can you see the difference in player styles that you have there as well so yeah you know these are quite basic stats but they offer a, a great deal of insight so you know one of the things that, that um, I'll do here is if you look at the difference in skill between players, you know, just a 1%, because in a tennis match there are hundreds of points, um, or there can be hundreds of points, just a 1% skill gap between two players creates a, a significant difference in terms of their percentage chance of winning the match, because 1% multiplied by 200 points, for example, is going to create a very large gap. Um, and if the gap is, you know, 5% difference, it's going to be massive in terms of how you would expect to price the match. I have done a graph on it somewhere. What I should do is throw that up on the screen. But basically, when you look at a player with equal levels of skill, they'll obviously be priced at evens. You know, it's a 50-50 chance whether one of these two players could win. But as that skill gap increases, then the odds change dramatically. So what I'll do is I'll bring up a full image of that on the screen so you can see how just a small percentage in skill difference between players uh, creates a massive gap in terms of their chance of winning a match because it's played over loads of points. It's a bit like saying, you know, the first person to score 10 goals in a football match, um, you know, you, you have to reach that target effectively in tennis as opposed to in a football match where you're time limited. So the more chances you get to do that, the bigger the skill gap will be. And uh, if you're looking even at a tiny percentage, that will mass apply, uh, mass apply? that will multiply to a massive difference over the course of a match. So, yeah. The graphic um, that I have put on the screen or will put on the screen at this particular moment in time, because uh, I haven't done it yet, will um, show you that gap between uh, the difference in, in players. So that's why you often see tennis matches priced at 105, 102, 103, because there's probably only a 5 to 10% difference in skill between the two players. Because you're, but, but because you're playing it over so many points, you know, it relates to a massive difference in the outcome of the individual match. So, uh, yeah, skill difference between players is quite small, but that gets magnified uh, over many points. And uh, that you know, creates a massive difference in terms of that percentage chance of winning. But um, the, the interesting thing is you look at the men's game on tennis and it's very different to the women's game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoot off and we'll bring up the WTA stats and we'll have a look at those. So I switched to the WTA site now. Um, which is where you can find all of the women's stats. And for people who aren't into tennis, ATP is the Association of Tennis Professionals. That's the men's game. WTA is Women's Tennis Association. It's the, the, the women's game. Um, different websites, similar stats. Um, they obviously converge in terms of the stats that everybody's looking at. So I've ranked the uh, women players here by their world ranking. You can see Osaka, Naomi Osaka is number one at the moment. And you can see she gets about 60% of her serves in and wins about 71% of those uh, serves that she does get in. But if you actually look um, down this list, you can see that generally, if we're looking at the service percentages, they're a bit weaker than the men. So this is where gender comes into play, because the men tend to be able to serve much harder and faster, tend to be a bit stronger, and often they tend to be taller as well. Not always, but um, they height is an advantage in tennis because you can get more height on the ball and you can hit it harder over the net, which makes it more difficult to return. But you can generally see that the women's um, game, there's a tendency to, for that first service, um, a point one on first serve to be a little bit lower. Um, and that is because they're not serving as hard and it's easier to return. So the women's game tends to be a little bit more competitive, less predictable than the men's. Um, and especially if you start throwing in, you know, clay surfaces and stuff like that, um, that changes the mix considerably. So yeah, you tend to get more volatility when you're looking at the women's uh, game because uh, breaks of serve occur more frequently. That's the net upshot of what we're looking at within here. If we look at the return percentages here, you can see the return percentages, as I sort of, you know, just indicated, are much, much higher. So again, being able to return a serve increases the chance of winning a point and increasing uh, chance of winning the points increases your chance of breaking serve. So this is why the, the women's tennis tends to be slightly better to trade than the men's because the men's is a bit boom bash um, using a lot of aggression to try and win a point whereas the women's game is a little bit more uncertain. But again you can see the sort of stats reflected here in terms of um, the way that they um, are played out. If I go and rank these, I've just realized I didn't rank these by 
the top players. But you can you can sort of see there uh, the sort of data that we're looking at here. Uh, the chance of returning um, a serve is actually sort of you know a little bit higher overall. I have um, shown this on some of the um, videos that I've done previously. I've actually got long-term stats in there, but all of these stats are freely available. So what I'm trying to do is show you where these stats are, what they sort of reveal, and um, you can then go off and play and do your own set of analysis on it from there. But these are the sort of stats that I tend to look at. And, you know, there's infinite layers of depth you can go to, but, um, you know, I'm not going to do that on a video. That would just take far too long. But, yeah, these are the sort of stats that are available, give you a clue as to how good uh, players are at serving and returning of serve. Um, and it's worth checking them out if you're going to analyse a match properly. It may give you a bit of an indication, a clue, as to how the match could play out and how competitive it will be and whether there's a good chance of a break of serve occurring at some point within the match. So, yeah, have a look at these sites. Um, if you want to get underneath the skin of a lot of these tennis matches. So how does this all fit in to what you do when you fire up BetAngel and use Tennis Trader? Well, um, it all makes perfect sense because the way that Tennis Trader is constructed is it's basically looking at the odds within a match. So I've just discovered this match that's fairly even. And um, it's basically sort of saying, well, okay, let's look at the odds. Let's compare this to all of the matches that we've seen the type of match that we're looking at and let's calculate out what that percentage is. What is the implied percentage that either of these players is going to win a point on serve? That's how Tennis Trader is constructed using the stats that you have seen uh, that we've just been looking at on those websites. Apart from Tennis Trader has been developed into a model and it monitors every single path that could happen within the match, works out the probabilities of that and then it comes up with a price for you. So when you first go in and you use Tennis Trader, you click on the Calibrate button, and that's what the Calibrate button does. It looks at the odds, it looks at the score, and it goes, hmm, I've seen this before. And then it, it, it comes out with a root figure uh, to be able to calculate all of that data forward. However, did you know that you can actually modify that yourself? So um, I've truncated the the matrix here so that we can just keep it on the screen um, at the moment. If I move this and expand it, which is going to take a couple of seconds, so bear with me while I do that. Just need to bring up the entire set matrix. Give me a second while I reposition this. What Tennis Trader is doing is basically plotting a path with every conceivable point within the match that could occur when players have a set percentage. So the Calibrate um, basically looks at the odds, looks at the players, looks at the match, and then basically works out what that percentage is. However, if you go next to the Calibrate button here, you can actually see that there's a little spanner. And if we click on that spanner, it brings up a dialog box, which I shall bring uh, actually, I can't bring it there because it's going to be pinned to the top. So I'll, I'll move it to its left in which case. And you can see here it says calibrate with a seed value of a certain number there. So 0 0.65 is actually the win on serve percent that you see on those WTA and ATP sites. So it's basically saying um, I'm going to look at 65%, look at these two players and then calculate out from that seed percentage as close as I can to your seed value, the difference in skill between these two players and calculate the value from there. Woo. So, um, yeah, that you can actually directly manipulate the output from Tennis Trader. And the best way to demonstrate this is to use fixed calibration value. So if you're an experienced Tennis Trader and you're using all sorts of data and stats to look at a match or you've done loads of epic research before a match starts and you want to input that into the model, you can use Tennis Trader as just a calculating engine. So, for example, if I do a fixed calibration, say we think both of them are going to win um, on serve 70% of the time, um, and we apply that, then can you see what it does to the score? Can you see that it says 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, Odds of 2 that either of these players are going to win. Why does it say that? Because um, that's what the model is set at. It's basically saying there's an equal chance of either player winning this particular match. If I look at the match grid, you can see it's evens there, basically, uh, because we're saying that both players are absolutely equal in every respect. They both win a, a, serve, a point on serve at the same rate as they can return, and they cancel each other out, 
and therefore they're exactly equal. If I um, redo this calibration now and then put one player 1% 1 lower and apply it again, then what you will see is that that changes. So you can actually propagate out the difference that a 1% difference in skill would have across the entire match. And you can actually see that beautifully presented for you on Tennis Trader. So if you want to use Tennis Trader sort of in, in its semi-intelligent mode where it tries to do all of that for you, um, it will basically try and correlate the setup that you've given it, the score and the skill of the players, and it roughly works that out. Um, but you can actually do that all yourself. If you want to go to the ATP and the WTA sites, you want to build your own model in terms of how you think those two numbers are going to interact with each, with each other, then you can just plug them in to Tennis Trader and it will do all of that for you. So if I trim this again to a 68% chance and apply it, you'll see how that influences the outcome. And if I do it again with a 5% skill difference and apply it, you'll see um, how that affects the income as well. So if we see a match between a player that has a 10% difference in skill, then you can see we're down into the 107s effectively uh, in terms of their uh, predicted odds of winning the particular match at that particular moment in time. So you can then begin to look at things the other way around. You can basically say this match is priced at 102, 105, 107. So it is saying that Djokovic is 10% better than some other player. And therefore you can sort of say, is that true? Is that really true? And therefore you can take your position, whether it's a betting or a trading decision, around that sort of data. Perfectly possible to do. Um, but, you know, that's the essence of the system. But also think about it, you know, the first set has gone by um, and you're beginning to notice a different sort of uh, way that one player is playing or something that he's doing that's different or perhaps you think he's tiring. You can actually use a fixed calibration value to keep um, that percentage exactly the way that you want it all the way through the match. So if you suddenly think that that 10% skill difference um, has shrunk a bit because of something that you can see on court, then you can adjust the model as you go along. So if you really, really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, um, adjust those values as the match progresses. But we're talking about a higher level of use there of Tennis Trader. And that's at a level that most people don't tend to work at. However, the model and the engine within Tennis Trader will allow you to manipulate and play around with that to your heart's content. Um, it's probably the most complicated piece of work we've ever done on the product. It does all sorts of clever stuff and its accuracy is down to you really because if you want to tweak the calibration values based upon what you see, you can either tweak them to understand where the price will go based upon your assumption or you look at what the prices are within the market and then you actually work out what the calibration value uh, is telling you about how people are discounting information into the market. Maybe they've looked at these two players and one is quite clearly better than the other and therefore, you know, they start expanding that percentage. Or maybe they think the opposite, that the highest skilled player is having a bit of a naff day and the percentage starts to shrink again. But whichever way you use it, it's a really powerful tool. It's perfect for trading on tennis. It's one of the best bits of work that we've done and you should absolutely learn to use it. It will absolutely completely transform the way that you trade tennis.